The devil is a professional loser. You are anointed to win. Welcome to the Whoop the Devil podcast. Here's your host, Corey Scarlett. Well, with that being said, I'm going to get into my podcast topic today, which is, and let me pull it up for you guys. Um, what I do with it? Oh, here it is. Who is the Antichrist and why it's not Trump or Biden? So a lot of people don't like talking about end time stuff. I'm not a complete expert, but I know enough about it. The one Simpsons episode. Yeah, there there's Simpsons episodes where he gets. There was a Simpson episode where he was uh, elected president or something. Or he was coming down the elevator before it happened. Right. It's kind of crazy how all that happens. But anyways. Um, so there are people I've seen people that talk. They, they act like Trump is the Antichrist or I've even seen people say Biden is or just random people they think is the Antichrist. And if you don't know who the Antichrist is, I'm going to spell out who it is uh, from a few scriptures in the Bible. But um, there is going to be a figure in the end times that appears and uh, that figure will be a political power that uh, the Bible calls the Antichrist. And I don't think he'll uh, he'll pop up and say, hey guys, just want to let you know I'm the Antichrist and I'm taking over. Don't think it's going down like that. However, um, the Bible spells out who he is. He's And, and the, the spirit of the Antichrist is already in operation today. And I'll show you where that's at in scripture. But I'll tell you some characteristics about who that person is going to be. And we'll see does that compare to anybody we know? And especially it doesn't compare to anybody um, running for president. Okay. Maybe a few things here and there uh, you could try to piece together, but people um, they've seen this scripture that the Bible talks about uh, in revelation 13. Okay. Revelation 13 verses three and four talks about this. It says one of its heads is talking about the antichrist. One of his heads are the beast. The Bible calls it the beast or the Antichrist. So Revelation, write this in the comments for me, Revelation 13. Revelation 13, because that's a big chapter when it comes to uh, the, the Antichrist. So it says, one of its heads seem to have a mortal wound, but its mortal wound was healed and the whole earth marveled as they followed the beast. So some people have tried to compare this to Trump. This is not the same thing. And they worship the dragon. That's the beast as well. For he had his authority. Or uh, that's the, the dragon, I believe, is is it Satan, right? Or is it the false prophet? I could be mixed up here. But anyways, it's all talking about the Antichrist. For he had given his authority to the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who can fight against it? So basically this passage suggests that the whole world will be amazed by the Antichrist and will follow him, indicating universal appeal. So like everybody's going to like him. Um, and peop- there's, there's different ways that people have looked at this scripture in Revelation 13 that talks about a mortal wound. Okay, some, the, There's a literal interpretation that people have. Uh, Some scholars and commentators believe that the wound could be understood as a literal injury to one of the heads of the beast. So like a head wound. Okay. The interpretation suggests that the head wound may symbolize a significant event such as an assassination attempt or serious injury, which could be miraculously healed. So this is not on that level. Trump getting hit in the ear is not on the level of a head wound where they think the man is dead and then he's resurrected again. So this is essentially a false resurrection. If you take it literally, which I lean this way, a fake resurrection by the antichrist mocking what Jesus did, right? So he's dead, but he, he miraculously comes back to life. This guy, the the miraculous recovery would enhance the beast allure and authority leading people to marvel at him. So basically it's going to have people, uh, they're going to be amazed by, oh, he died. We all saw him die. And then he he got back to life again. This is not the same thing as Trump, okay? Some people, some idiots on the internet 
said that, okay? <laughs> so I'm just clearing that up. If some people believe it's a symbolic representation, um, they basically argue that it symbolizes a serious setback or defeat for a kingdom or leader because a lot of people believe when the, when the Bible talks about the heads of the beast that it's talking about different kingdoms. In this view, the healing of the wound represents a restoration of power or a resurgence of influence after a perceived defeat. Okay? Okay. And uh, if you go down to verse 12, same chapter, it exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence. Okay, so what happens is there is a false prophet, okay, it's the second beast, all right? So you have the first beast in Revelation 13 and the first couple. That is, a, it says, this is what it says in the, in the scriptures. This beast rises out of the sea having ten horns and seven heads with blasphemous names on his heads. It resembles a leopard and has feet like a bear and a mouth like a lion. Now, if you're a young person on here, there's been people on TikTok saying that Mr. Beast, the famous YouTuber, is the Antichrist because there are some similarities in our reading of that they could that that he has with the Antichrist. And why do you call himself Mr. Beast? And especially his logo has some of this bear lion stuff going on, which is crazy. Um this first beast is a he's a we know from reading it and studying it scholars say he's a he's a world leader. So this is the Antichrist figure, a political power uh who embodies the spirit of the Antichrist. And he has this global authority. He opposes God and persecutes the saints that are alive during the time. Many interpretations link it um, to a future totalitarian regime. So you're looking at like a one world government. Yes, because the, the scriptures say that. Now, um, and I'll get into that in a minute. The second beast that it talks about is... Uh, a lot of people believe this is a, they or it's called the false prophet, and a lot of people believe it's a religious figure. The scholars would say this would be a religious figure. Some people go as far as to say it's the Pope, okay? Whoever the Pope is at the time. Um, I can't you confirm that, but uh, what religious, um, who has more influence in the world than the Pope? Not many people. I mean, you might say it could be somebody of like a, uh, Islamic kind of faith or something like that. Possibly you could try to go down that road as an interpretation. But this person says you must worship the first beast. Okay, uh, it's some it's a deceptive religious system or ideology that supports the political authority of the first beast. So it's a false prophet that says you've got to worship this guy. So like in the middle of the tribulation. So the tribulation is a seven year period. They split it into the tribulation and the great tribulation. Uh, it starts off with a peace treaty in the Middle East, okay? I believe it starts off, that's when the rapture happens and the church is gone because I believe a lot of these things that are going to happen can't happen until the church is gone. Scripture talks about a restraining force that needs to be removed. Now, not everybody's going to agree with me on that. I get it. But uh, once that force is removed, I believe that's when this system can be set up, ready to go, and everybody will be in a panic, and a guy like an antichrist could come in and settle things down. In the midst of him settling things down, uh, in the first three and a half years, he seems like the greatest dude in the world. In the middle, he he flips a switch, and he becomes uh, very evil. And he was evil all alone, but on a whole nother level. And he demands worship, okay? And this false prophet, this second beast, helps him uh, and makes that commandment uh, that they must uh, worship him. And uh, if you go to Revelation 13, 12, it says, talking about the false prophet, it exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence and makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose mortal wound was healed. So he takes a, a, a death blow, not a grace to the ear, and he rises again. And uh, this false prophet says, you must worship. And this reinforces the idea that the beast's recovery from the mortal wound plays a significant role in its power and influence, further leading to worship from the earth's inhabitants. Okay. Now, write this in the comments for me. There are, uh, uh, let's 
put it this way. Put it like this. The spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. The spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. And we can see this in 1 John 2.18. Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Now, most uh, of the newer translations, they capitalize. You heard that Antichrist is coming with a capital A as it, there's um, to differentiate that there will be an Antichrist. But it says many Antichrists have come. And what it's saying is there's a spirit of the Antichrist in the world now. You can see it. And I'll get into it, but it's a, it's a deceptive spirit. It's a lawless spirit, meaning no respect for authority or laws, um, no respect for God's law. It's a blasphemous spirit, no respect for God in general. Um, it's a spirit that wants a one world government, one world economy, control. It operates in fear. Uh, it operates off of lies. That's the Antichrist spirit. H how much do we see that in the world today? It's been in operation for years. And there's politicians now you can look that are, they are not the Antichrist, but they operate under an Antichrist spirit. The things they push, murderousness, lawlessness, rewriting God's laws, blaspheming God, no respect for God. Um, constant lying, constant twisting of words. You know, uh, this there's a big move in politics where, um, actually, I said this in church, and and some people got up and left last night. So I'm doing really good. Um, they call it female reproductive rights, but it's actually the truth of the matter is it's murdering a baby inside of a womb. You can call it whatever you want. You can dress it up in nice words. Just like they, they uh, and I believe Kamala Harris was, I, I saw her talking about this uh, on the campaign trail years ago. They asked her, what do you, um, uh, they were asking her actually about legalizing prostitution. But the words they use is consensual adult work. Consensual adult work. And she actually supported it, by the way. Um you, that sounds a lot better than um, paying for sex from another person, right? <laughs> but people twist the words around. That's deception. That's an anti I believe that's a part of an Antichrist spirit. Controlling the money uh, um, and all those things. That's part of the Antichrist spirit. So, and, and there are scholars, there are Bible scholars that believe that because the Bible says that only the Father... And this will mess up some people that are oneness. Only the father knows when it, when he's going to send his son to return again. Not even Jesus himself knows. Not even uh, Satan does not know. So they say, some scholars say, Satan's always had to have an Antichrist ready uh, for every generation. I mean, you can see the spirit of the Antichrist heavily active in somebody like a Hitler, in like a Stalin, in some of these, uh, uh, the the China, I forget his name, Mao Zedong, I think, the Chinese uh, dictator. Um, so you've seen these things. Fidel Castro, even, you could go down that line. Uh, Antichrist spirits operating. People that had great influence and were murderous and, and things like that. But let's talk about some, some of the, the uh, characteristics of the Antichrist and why this is... Why and you you tell me does a Trump or a Biden fall into these and you'll see it does he does it and I'll, I'll I'll interject when we get there but if you go to Second Thessalonians two, three and four, it says this: Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first. So there's a there's a great rebellion that happens before this goes down, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction the. So he's a man of lawlessness. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard about that. Um, I just, I actually just heard that name, Miss Fran. There was a guy that had a crazy vision. Maybe you've seen it. Um, on a, a guy of like the tribulation, and I usually don't go like. 
I've seen so many weird stuff when it comes to visions, not that I don't believe in them, but there's been so many people that have said stuff that's so out of line of scripture that I just kind of write most of them off. But this guy, he seemed like he legitimately had this vision. And he taught, he actually mentioned um, that person uh, in his vision. So not as the false prophet. He actually said the false prophet was a pope. But, and he said that he said in the vision, the Lord wouldn't let him see uh, who the Antichrist was. He had his face blurred out um, in the vision. So maybe it's somebody we know already. Um, but check it out. He's a man of lawlessness. The Antichrist, you can write this in the comments, man of lawlessness. That means no rules. That's that martial law stuff they keep talking about. He's going to be a man that has no rules or either rewrites the rules. A son of destruction. And check this out. He, he opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship. So check this out. He, uh, he exalts himself against every God. Even the other gods, not just the Jehovah, not just the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's where a lot of people miss it. And, and I, I know there's a lot of, a lot of people believe he's going to be a Muslim leader because of the extremism. But he, according to scripture, he exalts himself against every so-called God. So if that's to be taken literally, which I believe it is, he cannot be. He has to um, somehow disrespect Allah as a God as well. And he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. So as bad as Trump, as, uh, as Trump or Biden have been to you, um, you know, yeah, he, he might be a Jewish person because, uh, and a lot of people believe that I was trying to find a scripture that would say that I, I could not find it. But I guess because maybe because the, the Jews will be deceived in great number to follow him as the Messiah, that they that they he would have to be Jewish, right? Maybe that's where that comes from. Um, but none of them, neither Trump or Biden have claimed to be God, okay? Or maybe you say, maybe not yet, but no, I don't think, see, this is one reason why they can't be. The next one is probably the biggest reason why, why definitely one of them can't be. And it is that he will rise to power because of his cunning mind. He will have such an intelligent and sharp mind that it will cause him to rise to power very quickly. Okay? So um, check this out. This is in Daniel chapter 8, starting with verse 23. I'm just kind of going with some quick hits on, on what we know about the Antichrist. Not really going down timelines and stuff like that for the end times. I'm just giving you characteristics. Um, in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise having fierce features. That means he's like an han a handsome or a good looking dude. Okay. Um, so neither one of those guys are have fierce features. Let's be honest. Okay. Um, whether you love Trump or, or, or hate him, he's not a, He's not a, 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 a handsome dude, okay? I know he's got great hair. And, you know, same thing goes for Biden. Who understands sinister schemes. One translation says who understands riddles. Basically, like, he's super smart. He can understand uh, and plant, plot out great schemes. You know, um, a lot of people believe after, like, post-rapture, he will rise up with a, with a plan that will uh, unite all the nations. This scheme that he has that... Um, and that'll be linked to the mark of the beast. And we'll get that in a minute, uh, that would control people and things like that. His power shall be mighty, but not power, not by his own power. Well, the scriptures also say that he is, uh, basically possessed and controlled by Satan. Okay. And he's allowed to do, uh, things on this earth that Satan would not be otherwise allowed to do. He shall destroy fearfully. He'll drive. He'll drive people. Uh, he'll be. He'll be. Um, he'll rule by fear, right? And shall prosper and thrive. So he will be a success. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. So he's going to destroy mighty people and the Jew, the Jewish people. I don't believe Elon is, but he would have been more characteristics than Trump or O Biden. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I could agree with that. 
through his cunning, he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule. So through his cunning, Trump is he's pretty a cunning guy. Biden, the opposite. He shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule, and he shall exalt himself in his heart, and he shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without human means. That last statement basically means um, he'll rise against the he'll try to rise against Jesus himself. This man will because you got to think about this. If, if you don't know, there's a battle in the end where they literally accumulate forces to fight against Jesus. The Antichrist does. And Jesus comes and destroys them. Battle of Armageddon, right? So he's going to rise against the prince of princes, Jesus, and but he'll be broken without human means. So um, human force won't stop him, only Jesus, basically what that's saying. Um, and it's gonna he's going to be so cunning he can get global influence. Well, this can't be Trump or Biden because they can't, they are not able to get that kind of influence. The country is divided. Um, was 50, 50 at one time It's looking more like 75, 25 in the last little bit. So, um, but it's divided and people are not on the same page. They're not people. The, the thing coming out of the, what you, you know, coming out of the debate for a lot of people was, man, I can't believe this is our two candidates. Um, a lot of people, that was the sentiment of a ton of people. So I wish we had something better. I wish we had a third option, blah, 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 stuff like that. They're not on the same page. They, the, he, they don't have that quality of the Antichrist. So take that off the table. He will rise to power quickly. Another thing, Daniel eleven twenty one. 21. In his place shall arise a contemptible person to whom royal majesty has not been given. So they won't know who he is before. He won't, he'll be this kind of unknown. That's where people get that, that thought process that the Antichrist will be an unknown because he'll He'll, it'll be this person whom royal majesty had not been given. He'll rise kind of out of obscurity. He shall come in without warning and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. So he's going to basically kiss butt to get his way to the top somehow and, and just get an influence that way. Um, he'll use flattery and deceit to gain power and influence, potentially leading to widespread admiration and support. So that's pretty interesting there. Going back to uh, Revelation 13, I'm looking at verse 7 and 8 now. He'll have global authority. And neither one, Trump or Biden, would have, they, they're nowhere close to having global authority. They can't get people, uh, it, it's not that kind of thing. And that's why I think that the, there has to be a rapture because there's so, going to be so much resistance. Um. Anyways, um, without the church here, or with the church here, there will be resistance. But looking at verse 7, Revelation 13, 7. Also it was allowed to make war on the saints, talking about the beast, and to conquer them. And authority was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation. So he's ruling over the entire world. Okay, And all who dwell on earth will worship it. Everyone whose names had not been written before in the foundation of the world in the book of life, or book of life of the Lamb who was slain. All right. So he's demanding worship. He'll have authority over all nations and will demand worship by people who are not followers of Christ. And people who get saved during that time period um, and decide not to take the mark, and they basically have to run away from his authority because he will kill them, behead them. Um Antichrist is said to have authority over all nations. Okay, let me skip that. Another thing he'll do, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. So he's going to deceive people and one way he'll do it is by doing false miracles. You can write in the comments, the Antichrist will perform false miracles. So by the power of Satan, he will perform deceptive miracles that will cause people to follow him in masses. That's how he's going to deceive massive amounts of people. Um, and yeah, we've seen deception from politicians. 
but never at this level that it's talking about here. How about blasphemy against God? Uh, Revelation 13, 5 and 6, backing up. I'm kind of like jumping all over the place in this chapter. And the beast was given a mouth uttering haughty and blasphemous words and was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. So that's that first half of the thing. It opened its mouth, or the second half, I guess, opened its mouth to utter blasphemies against God, blaspheming his name and his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. All right, so if you're, if you're a pre-trib rapture person, all the saints will be up there. He'll be blaspheming God and those that, you know, it's crazy because um, they'll people will know the people that left the earth were Christians, okay? There won't be a question. They'll figure that out at some point that everybody that's gone will be a Christian. Um, and he's blasphemes them, okay? He, he talks disrespectful to God. And uh, you don't see that. I mean, you know, Trump, whether you... You know, he's not the cleanest man in the world by all any means, but he, he respects God. Biden, for the most part, says good things. Now, every now and then he says some borderline blasphemous stuff, to be honest, if you want to break it down. I'm not getting into that. Um, he said Jesus would have to come down and he, to tell him uh, not to run, and he's not coming down. Um, and people took that as blasphemy. Um Blasphemy against all gods. And this is another thing I, I was talking about earlier. Uh, and I'll, I'll, th I'll throw something out here for you, friend, in a second. That might be really interesting. Um, Daniel eleven thirty six, 36. And the king shall do as he wills. He shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. So you're talking Buddha, Allah, uh, Jehovah, Jesus, right? It, the, our God and other gods. And shall speak astonishing things against the God of God. So talking about he's gonna, the blasphemous things that we were just talking about before. This prophecy indicates that the Antichrist desire to be it indicates his desire to be worshipped and his opposition to the true God. Now, did you know? I don't know if anybody knows about this. In the Islamic faith, there's a um, there is something called the Mahdi, M A H D I, and there's been books written on this. Because in the, in the writings of Muhammad and the teachings of Islam, they actually talk about a lot of end time things. They even, uh, I believe, talk about Jesus coming back. Uh, that, Jesus, that, that they would defeat this, this evil person, the Mahdi, and Jesus would defeat this evil, I forget the name of the, the person that would be, they would consider would be the Antichrist. However, the th and, and I, I was looking for the exact reference, so if I, I could be wrong on this, but I heard, and I've, I've, stu I've heard people tell, uh, many people say this, um, that this Mahdi, Mahdi character would be this Islamic leader that would rise and would um, be, like his authority would trump any other writings in the Islamic faith. Um, and I've seen some disagreements on that. Some people say, no, it wouldn't. Some people said, yes, it would. That's where I'm a little iffy on it. But like he rises up. So this is how, because um, if you think about it, he's going to make everybody worship, right? Jews are going to worship him that are deceived. Muslims, people that were atheists, if they want to survive, will worship him. All these other things, right? So this Mahdi He's going to basically rise up and say, hey, um, it's okay. You don't have to kill these other people that don't worship like you. And he'll, he'll kind of change the rules. I mean, that's, that's basically what, what um, could be going down there. That's how it's like, if he's rising himself up against every God, why wouldn't the Muslims turn on him? Well, because if he if he comes up and he's con he's considered to the Muslims the Mahdi, then they wouldn't, and they would respect what he said over the pre-existing writings in Islam. So, I'm not a a um, deep scholar on that, but I know a little bit about it. So, interesting stuff there. If you go to Revelation thirteen eight, it says this: All who dwell on earth will worship it, the Antichrist, the Beast, everyone whose name. Oh, we read that earlier. So he'll, he'll demand uh, worship from all non-believers, all non-Christians globally, because they'll be gone, empowered by Satan. 
Uh, the dragon, Satan, gave his power and his throne and great authority. Revelation 13, 2. There's no evidence to suggest, this is what it, this thing wrote. There's no evidence to suggest that either Trump or Biden is directly empowered by Satan as described for the Antichrist. Okay. Uh, he'll make war on the saints. Uh, Revelation 13, 7. It was allowed to make war on the saints and conquer them. And the authority was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation. Um, Trump or Biden, you know, a, as bad as some of the Biden's policies have been for Christians and what we believe, he's never declared war on the Christians, okay? How about control over the economy? Now, this is one you can make an argument. You can see in one specific party, they want to control the money and the economy. They want to take... They want to do away with private property at some point. Um, they, want, they want to go towards a socialist society, which is a step towards what the Antichrist wants to do and what the end times look like. So Revelation 13, 16, and 17 says, It causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave. Don't matter if you're, if you're uh, young or old, rich, poor, you in jail, you ain't in jail to be marked on the right hand or the forehead. And literal, literal translation, a mark in or on. Okay, so it's in, it, it's, it could be implanted. That's why a lot of people believe it's a chip or something like that. Some people believe it's Neuralink. I won't get into that today. Um, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark. That means you can't, um, oh, no big deal. I just can't buy or sell nothing. That's literally... How do you make money? Somebody's selling something. Uh, you're selling your time. You won't be able to get any money. You won't be able to sell anything. You won't be able to have a business unless you take this mark. And you won't be able to buy anything from anyone unless you take this mark. So the Christians, um, and that's where, you know, a lot of people, uh, the, the, when Jesus was talking about in Matthew, I believe, twenty. Is it Matthew 21 or no, Matthew 23, I believe, where he talks about the end times in depth. Um, and he talks about how you've got to, they run, they're going to run to the hills and, and woe to the people that have children during that time. Um, a lot of people believe that is the people that get saved during the tribulation period are going to run and hide in the hills because they can't survive. They'll basically try to live off the grid hiding from the, uh, the the uh, antichrist okay um no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark that is the name of the beast and the number of his name so if you don't take that mark and you are going to starve or you'll be killed if you don't worship it's it's actually um going to be a pledge of worship at some point maybe not initially i don't know you know there's contention over when the mark gets introduced because he doesn't initially the Antichrist doesn't initially demand worship until the middle of the tribulation, okay? When he uh, disrespects the temple and uh, declares himself God and demands worship. Um, that is when um, he'll demand that worship. And, and the mark won't, only, won't just be a, uh, uh, an economic thing. It's a, it's a pledge of allegiance and worship to people, to, to that Antichrist, okay? So... Um, Neither Trump or Biden have in, have instituted a global economic system that controls buying or selling through a mark. Okay, however, uh, Biden's administration does lead towards that. Yeah, a mock run for it. You're right. Uh, I agree that C nineteen was a mock run for the mark. Totally agree with you on that. And look how many people laid down for that. Um, Christians included. That don't know nothing about in times, to be honest with you. This doesn't get taught on enough. But um, great destructive power. Daniel 8, 24 through 25. His power shall be great, but not by his own power. He shall cause fearful destructive and shall succeed in what? Oh, we read that one earlier. Daniel 7, 25. Let me go here. Uh he shall speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. He's going to wear them out. You think about that. Imagine there's Christians trying to survive during that time 
are Jews that realize they missed it and they turn to Christianity. They say well, Jesus was truly the Messiah. And uh, he's going to try to wear them out so that they give in. And there will probably be people that say, ah, I can't fight anymore. Give me the mark. And when you take that mark during that time, if you're watching this back, you know, if you take that mark, if, if Jesus comes and you're watching this during that time, if you take that mark, um, you're going to hell. There's no going back on that. Okay? So you have to resist. They'll kill your children in front of you. They'll manipulate you during that time period um, to try to get you to give in. Uh, this man that I was watching had a vision that uh, it was a family of two kids, a husband and a wife. And they said they got caught and they said, you got to take this mark or we're going to kill your kids right here. And she said, no, 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 I'll take the mark. I'll take the mark. And the wife took the mark and made the kids take the mark. And then they just killed the dad right in front of them. So, yee. Um, but it said he'll have, uh, he shall think to change the times and the law. So he's going to change laws around. Obviously, one world government, you'll definitely be doing that. Um, that will be a wrap for you. So don't take it. Yeah. And it said he'll change the time. So basically, like, he's going to change uh, important dates around and holidays and things like that. That's what, when I did my research, that's what they said. So, you know, there probably ain't going to be no more Christmas. <laughs> ain't going to be no Easter. Um, but those are just, um, you know, you don't hear a lot about his appearance. The only thing he said, he had, he will have fierce looks. That's all you really know. Uh, and he's going to want a one world government. Uh, that's why certain policies that want to do away with borders, we, as from a Christian perspective, that's leading towards a one world government, no real sovereign nations. And you can go, if you want to get even deeper into it, um, it's not a racial thing. It's, it's a, it's a governmental thing. Just, it's really a common sense thing, but also on a spiritual level, it's, it's no sovereign nations is a bad thing. You know, you don't walk, you don't leave your doors unlocked for your house because you say this is my house and you if ain't nobody coming in except for my people. That's the reason why we got doors with locks on. Um, and we make the rules in this house. It might be different than your rules. And this is our house. Same thing with the country. Uh, but the Antichrist agenda is to get rid of all that. We all under one world government, one world military that he'll rule with an iron fist and that will do whatever, you know, you have to have somebody that's carrying out those murders for people that don't take the mark. So that's a one world government, one world military, one world economy, one world money system, right? So you have to take the mark to participate in it. And it's all going to be under the same dollar, whatever that dollar ends up being, whatever that currency ends up being. And one world religion, he's going to demand worship. So it's a religious thing. So you know, Trump and Biden are not the Antichrist. If you ever thought they were, they don't fall into all, they don't fit these categories. They don't fit hardly any of them, to be honest with you. So uh, I've kind of put that on there for, for uh, clicks and giggles. But I have heard, I have seen people say that. That's basic stuff about the Antichrist. You can get into timelines and see some, some crazy stuff um, about him, but they are definitely not. They don't fit those categories, especially the part about being cunning. Definitely one of them. But um, if you just hopped on, I'm about to I'm about to end. So we talked about the Antichrist and the characteristics of the Antichrist and what to look out for. But if you are um, if you want to give you want to sow a seed towards um, if you didn't know me and my wife. We are now the campus pastors of Dominion Church in Sumter, South Carolina. So if you want to support that ministry, um, we would love for you to sow a seed. Okay, sow a seed in faith. Uh, we are out there trying to tell people about the gospel. We will be doing outreaches and all kinds of things like that. We uh, did one, you know, um, was it not this Sunday, but the Sunday before. Had a great crowd and many people get saved. And... Uh, that's what it's about. This whole why am I telling you about the Antichrist? Because it's just signs that we see as the world is turning that direction, leaning towards the thing, the Antichrist spirit and the ways of the Antichrist, 
that Jesus' return is only going is only coming sooner. So we all need to get our lives right. Be watchful. Be careful how we live. We don't, uh, um, you know, don't waste your time as a Christian. Don't waste your time not telling others about Jesus, and don't waste your life living unholy and living loose. And living lukewarm, as it says in Revelation chapter 3. So I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for a new fire to come on your life. And um, if you want to give, you want to sow a seed, by all means, please do. So Father God, I thank you for this time together, Lord. I pray that you give everyone watching today uh, a spirit of discernment, able to discern the Antichrist spirit that's in operation in the world today, to not be deceived by a politician, a celebrity, uh, um, uh, uh, influential person, um, books, and, and, and any kind of media that would try to sway them a certain way that is just deception that comes straight from hell and that could be operating under an Antichrist spirit. Lord, let them, let them catch every Antichrist politician before they go vote in November. Lord, I pray that you reveal to them the truth Lord, and that we would stand fast and and stand firm uh, in who in in standing for what's right. As this agenda tries to get pushed, we will resist and we will stand for you, Lord. And we thank you right now, Lord. I pray for a fresh fire to fall on everybody that's that's um, watching right now for soul winning, Lord. The person they're thinking about telling about Jesus at their job in their family uh, that they they see around at the gym or or wherever they see these people that you would give them the boldness and give them the words to say, to, to open a door of opportunity for them to share the gospel. Lord, I thank you. They'll do it and many people will get saved. They'll move in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, give them words of wisdom and words of knowledge. Give them uh, uh, the gift of faith to pray for somebody that's, that's, that's sick and struggling and hurting. Lord, and I, I thank you right now in this last days, Lord, that the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. So we're praying that you would send the workers into the fields, Lord, and we are willing to be those workers. Lord, I pray uh, that everyone watching, you light a new fire in them. They won't be lukewarm. They'll be on fire for you in these last days. And I pray that you bless everyone that gives today. Uh, bless their seed abundantly. Uh, let it let it produce a harvest 30, 60, and 100 fold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for watching. Look, y'all got on at the right time. Right when I listen, you got to rewind because we all these people hopping on. I got I got Jennifer Mullins, I got Lissette Evans. Oh my goodness, my old my old people from back in the day. I hope y'all are doing great, and uh, we we love y'all still. And thank y'all for being good, great people in our lives. Um, so if you want to watch it, we watched. <laughs> Some stuff from the assassination attempt, and then I talked a lot about the uh, the Antichrist and the characteristics. So if you want to know who the Antichrist is, a, a brief overview, rewind and watch this if you're just hopping on. I love y'all. Thanks for watching. God bless you, and God bless America.